you know wrestling fans, you know guys, Raw is officially over. WWE for 2019 is officially done and gone. And I thought this would be the perfect time to come on here, start the channel back up, and present, you know, Raw and SmackDown reviews, previews, and predictions, you know, things of that nature. You know, I had about two, two and a half weeks span of just taking a break. You know, I wasn't sure if I was going to continue doing uh, uh, reviews and things like that for you because of all the YouTube changes. And honestly, I was just getting really worn out, you know, because I was getting on here every single Raw, SmackDown, every single pay-per-view, everything, bringing it to you every week. And the more I watched the show, not looking at it as... I was going to review it more like a fan. The more I thought, is this really even worth watching? I found myself turning off Monday Night Raw and SmackDown for that matter before the show was even over. You know, wrestling fans, tonight, I actually stuck around to see what was going to happen. How Lana's and Bobby Lashley's wedding was going to end. You know, you see, in a lot of WWE weddings... They never end uh, uh, in a good way. The only wedding in WWE that I can remember it going all the way through and, and having a an somewhat happy ending until the reception is Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth. 1991 SummerSlam. And you don't even get to see the reception unless you watch it on Coliseum Home Video. Now wrestling fans, tonight, what did we see with the wedding? Apparently, Lana dumping every man in sight. Almighty Cringely having ex- Girlfriends and wives. And Rusev popping out of the wedding cake. That's how Raw went off the air for 2019. The wedding of the century, wrestling fans. That's what I waited around for the entirety of Monday Night Raw. Now, if WWE would have put Randy Orton on last. Even though I am getting tired of seeing AJ Styles, with the exception of the last two weeks, taking RKO week in and week out, month in and month out, every week, taking an RKO and losing, with the exception of the last two weeks, I wouldn't be on here griping, moaning, groaning, and complaining. Quite frankly, I did not want to bring to you a griping Monday Night Raw review. But after seeing the end of Monday Night Raw, I can't help myself. I just can't. I'm not saying everything was bad. I mean, we did see a tremendous opening contest between Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black. 
I really wish Buddy Murphy would pick up some uh, victories uh, now. Because I'm tired of seeing him lose. And he has gotten over with me. And Paul Heyman has done a tremendous job putting him in situations now, even though he's lost, where he's gotten over with me. So... Congratulations! You've made a fan. You've given Buddy Murphy a fan in me. Okay? Now, move on from Aleister Black. If you have to give him one more match, do so. Put on another instant classic and give Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black something much more important to do. Outside of feeding Buddy Murphy to Aleister Black. But wrestling fans, in a nutshell, what did we see on Monday Night Raw outside of this? Becky Lynch announcing that her contract is uh, expiring and, and, and that she's facing Asuka at the Royal Rumble should be an excellent, tremendous contest. Don't get me wrong. But, that's one thing I'm getting tired of hearing. Every time a WWE superstar uh, contract come out, what do they do? They come out and announce that their contract is uh, coming up. Okay, we get it. Your contract's coming out, WWE grants them whatever they want, so they get, so they get re-signed. So they don't go to AEW and uh, all the other wrestling promotions out there. Whether that's hooked into the storyline or it is real. A big part of the time, it's real. Now, in Becky Lynch's case, um, it's a toss-up, okay? It's a toss-up whether you can say it's real or not. How how much you know they have pushed her to the moon. Her and Seth Rollins. So I don't know what you all think about that, but that's how I feel, you know, about superstars coming out and, and telling us that. Their contracts are expiring and things of that nature. Okay. Them telling us on Twitter that WWE has re signed is enough for me. Alright. Whatever. Charlotte versus Natalia. Pretty much just set up so everybody, well, all the jobbers. And archers, because I don't consider him a jobber anymore, can run around the ring like a chicken with their heads cut off, going after the 24 7, 7 11 European championship, uh, championship. I love it. That's all that match was set up for, and to promote the Women's Royal Rumble matchup. Speaking of which, Royal Rumble, one of my favorite pay-per-views out of the year. Survivor Series has always been my favorite pay-per-view, but the Royal Rumble really is one of my favorite. The start of the road to WrestleMania. If we're not already on that road, some, some wrestling fans would say we're already on the road. Depends on who you're talking to, really. I mean, next week, we're seeing Brock Lesnar. Honestly, next week we're seeing Brock Lesnar. Next week we're seeing tag team championships on the line. The OC getting a shot at the tag team titles. The Viking Raiders. 
all this stuff happening. We're seeing Andrade defend the title against Rey Mysterio. Honestly, if they would have put some of what they're going to do next week on this week, and, and, and taking out some of the, the garbage that they gave us this week. I might not be griping. Okay? In 2019 with a bang. And also have a really good start to 2020. You can do both. But what do I know? Huh? What you give us for the end of 2019 is, is uh, 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 the wedding of the century. Uh, according to uh, Jerry the King Lawler and Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy. Only one of those was accurate. Buddy Murphy versus Aleister Black. Really good matchup. And that was at the beginning of Monday Night Raw. Wedding of the Century? If that was the Wedding of the Century, then... I don't know what the other weddings fall into. And I don't know what Jerry King Lawler has been watching over the last number of years since he's been doing commentary. <sighs> In any case, next week we have Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, where Paul Heyman will be talking, not Brock Lesnar. Okay, we have Andrade versus Rey Mysterio, and we have tag team titles on the line. I hope next week is better. They did not cap off 2019 with a bang, with an awesome show. I'm getting out of here. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did or if you agreed with anything that I said, please leave me a thumbs up. It's great to be back. And of course, until I see you again, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.